I used Adobe Illustrator and Tinkercad to create the case design. I'm starting with my acrylic runes project here and I added another layer showing what I want the case shape to be. I added a couple millimeters on each side for room for the Neo pixels to go and some space at the top for the Pro Trinket and the battery and the button. This image right here is going to be the hole in the box, not the box itself. I'm going to add a couple more millimeters of wall thickness when we get into Tinkercad. I'm going to save this as an SVG file. And now I can take my shape and I can import it into Tinkercad. I have a new project here. I'm just going to import that file. I want to grab the dimensions there from Illustrator so that I can get it right. I don't know why Tinkercad doesn't like to import the dimensions, but I can grab them from right here. I have 87 millimeters wide and it looks like 94 and a half millimeters high. I want my case to be about 20 millimeters thick. If I press R, then I can get a ruler and get dimensions here. And right now it imported it at 10, so I'm going to go ahead and make that 20. I'm going to make it 25 just because I want a little room to work with. And this is actually the hole in the box that we're starting with. It's not actually the box itself. So let's make it a hole. I'm going to duplicate this so that there are two of them. I'll make the other one solid again. And then I'm going to make the outside walls of the box by adding about four millimeters. That's going to give me two millimeters on each side. So I'll align these two. And then I'm going to pull the hole up off the ground about two millimeters so that there's a nice two millimeter bottom to the box. I want the box dimensions to be 20 millimeters high, so I'll fix that up and then group these two and I have a box. Next I'm going to add a hole for the USB port and one for the on-off switch. Let's have a little more room here. My USB cable is about 8 millimeters by 12 millimeters uh, on the outside. So I'm going to make the box about that size. Uh, let's see, we'll make it eight millimeters tall and then uh, 12 deep. And then we'll move it right in there. Uh, it's about 65 millimeters from the bottom of the box up to where I want the USB part. Uh, that's how tall my acrylic is, so I'm going to just kind of eyeball this here. Every square is 10 millimeters, so that's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 65. I want it about here. And then I want to align it so that it's uh, centered between the top and bottom of the box. Perfect. Uh, let's do another one on the other side for the on-off switch. And to do that, I'm just going to duplicate this guy and drag him over here while I hold down the shift button so it stays on the same plane. Don't have to realign it. And this one is a little smaller. The switch is about 5.5 by 11.5 millimeters, so we're going to make this hole 6 by 12. Right. I'm going to group all of this together, and now we've got portholes. Portholes. My button is uh, about six millimeters thick, and then it has a couple of millimeters on top of that for the little LED sequence. So I'm going to I'm going to call it eight altogether. 
I want it pretty flush with the top of the box, maybe a little bit below. So I'm going to make a little pillar that's about 12 millimeters high, and then I'm going to sink it into the bottom of the box a little bit. I'm going to pull it up just one millimeter so that it's still intersecting with the box by a full millimeter. Sometimes in Tinkercad, if you just put pieces on top of each other, then they end up, when they print, they sort of separate. So I like to embed them kind of deeply within each other. Let's align that as well. And for now, I'm just going to sort of eyeball where it goes. I'm going to place my battery up here. So let's, let's nudge this a couple of millimeters up. I think that's going to be about good. But uh, what I'm going to do now is do a test print and put all my components in there and see if everything fits. And look at that, it all fits perfectly. But of course, this is not my first print. <laughs> this is maybe my fifth or sixth print. But eventually, after tweaking and tweaking, I've got it so that it's just exactly perfectly right. The lid of the case is the part that people are going to see and interact with the most, so I wanted it to look really cool. I started by taking some inspiration from actual metal Viking belt buckles. I uh, did my best to kind of imitate that look and shape. I like the slight rounded contour, and I really liked the carved sort of etched look. I added another layer to my Illustrator file to represent the walls of the box that I just made in Tinkercad. And then I drew a lid shape over the top of the box. I want to make sure it extends beyond all the different edges and uh, has a cutout for the runes to show through and also a cutout here for the button. Once I'm happy with that shape, I can save it as an SVG and import it into Tinkercad. That imported really big, so let me fix the scale again by getting those dimensions from, from Illustrator. And that looks like it should fit just right. I need to make the hole in the bottom of the lid so that it fits nicely over the top of the box. To do that, I just want to get a duplicate of this outside box shape. I'm going to ungroup. until I can grab just that one piece, and then I'm going to Command D to duplicate it, get it out of the way, and then we can put all these other ones back together again. Let's align these two to just make sure that they're going to fit. Looks like it'll be pretty close, but I'm going to add a couple of millimeters to the box lid just to make sure that there's plenty of room for it to snap on and off without having to worry too much about uh, it fitting too tightly. So let's make it. I'll make this a little thicker. So that we have a good amount of overhang. We want about four millimeters of overhang here, I think. Turn this one into a hole and group them. This is a good time to export it and do another test print just to make sure that your general shape is going to fit on your box. Next, I want to do the carving on top of the lid. I went online and I did a search for some Celtic knotwork ornament vector art, and there's a ton of free stuff out there. And I looked around until I found one that I really liked. When I downloaded it, I opened it up in Illustrator. This one was already on an artboard, on a background, so 
I just went in and deleted all the, the background artwork so that I have just the just the Celtic knot itself and then saved it and I can import that also into Tinkercad. The sizing for this part's not so important. I basically just want to make it look good. So I'm going to drag it around and just kind of smoosh it until it fits on the lid and looks about like I want. I'm going to make it a little deeper as well. I want the etching to be deep enough that the uh, the light will shine through it, but not so deep that it goes all the way through the lid. pretty good. Now I'm going to make this etching into a hole and group the two shapes. Looks like I got it a little too thick in here. It has intersected with the hole underneath. So I'm just going to ungroup it. I'm going to make this part a little thicker. Try it again. That looks good. The next thing I want to do is I want to bevel the top of this so that it looks a little bit rounder. Right now it's pretty blocky and square. There's not really a good bevel feature in Tinkercad, so you have to sort of make it up. And the way I do that is I'm going to start with a grabbing a half sphere, and I'm just going to drag it out until it looks like it's about the size and shape of the bevel that I want on the lid. The part that's sticking up through the sphere is the part that's going to get sliced off. So I'm trying to find just a good happy medium where all the edges will get sliced off but I have plenty of material left. It's not going to get too thin. That looks pretty good to me. Now what we need to do is actually make a negative of this half sphere so that we can use it as a whole to cut off the extra. The way I'm going to do that is to grab a box and just make it a giant box. We're going to cover the whole thing in box. And then we're going to group and turn the sphere into a hole and group it together with the with the box. Oops. I'm 
Now we have a box with a negative half sphere cut into it, sort of carved in. So we're going to make the box into a hole and then combine it with our box lid. All right, and looking at this, you can see that the edges have been nicely, slightly rounded, and it looks pretty cool. I'm going to go ahead and give it another test print. You can keep on tweaking on this. Uh, I, I use the same method to bevel the inner hole and the buttonhole. Just keep tweaking on it until it looks the way you want it to look.